We will now develop the excitation tables for a D flip-flop, a JK flip-flop, and a T flip-flop. If you remember in our previous video, we had worked on a sequence detector where we were trying to detect the sequence 110. That video ended with us developing this state transition table. When we got to this point, we said our next step would be to decide what kind of flip-flops we wanted to use to implement the circuit, and then we need to know what the inputs are on those flip-flops in order to drive the circuit correctly. And that's what led us then to the excitation tables and how they're developed. So for a D flip-flop, we'll um, develop what's called the excitation table, which will show the minimum inputs that are necessary to generate a particular next state when the current state's known. So we know the present state from our state transition table. We also know what we want the next state to be. So we want to determine what must the input be on a D flip-flop in order to generate the output, the next state output that we want. So these flip-flop are these excitation tables are based on the characteristic equation of the D flip-flop. And previously, when we studied the flip-flops, we developed this characteristic equation that said Q in the next state, so Q is the output of the flip-flop is equal to D, which D is the input to the flip-flop, meaning on a clock edge, we have the transition of the flip-flop from the present state to the next state. So whatever is on D, then when we have that clock edge, Q next, this will be, this will go into the flip-flop, right, into the flip-flop's memory, and it will transition through out to Q as the output. So it will store D in its memory, is a better way to say that. So our excitation table for the flip-flop, then we always show Q in the present state, Q in the next state, and then we determine what we want the input to be on D. Because the characteristic equation is that Q next, so Q plus is Q next is equal to D, the present state, as you can see from this equation, Q in the present state does not affect Q in the next state, meaning the input D is simply derived from this column Q next. So when we want our next state to be a zero, our input on D must be a zero. We want our next state to be a one, the input on D must be a one. And similarly, you can see over here, it doesn't matter what Q present is, Q next or D will always be equal to Q next. So that's how we'll decide what, go, what we need to put on the inputs to the D flip-flop. For the JK flip-flop, we look at its characteristic equation. So Q in the next state, or Q plus, is equal to J, and with not Q, or with not K, and with Q. That was our characteristic equation of that JK flip-flop from its state table. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Well, we're going to work through developing the character, or the excitation table. The JK flip-flop excitation table will have Q in the present state, Q in the next state, same columns as D, but we have two inputs to determine. We need to know what we want J to be and what we want K to be. We'll go back now and we'll start with when Q in the present state is zero and Q in the next state is zero, there is no change in the next state from the present state. So what we're doing is we're taking this characteristic equation Q next is equal to J and with Q naught or with K naught and with Q. So right here, this zero is Q next. This zero is Q in the present. So Q in the present here, Q next here. So J and with zero naught becomes J and with one or with K naught and with zero. Well, if you look at this equation right here, it doesn't matter what k is. Whenever we add anything with zero, we know we will get out the value of zero. So if k is a zero, we're going to get out of zero. If k is one, we're going to get out of zero. So this part of the equation when q in the present state is a zero does not affect our output. We look at this part of the equation, j and with one simply gives us j. Meaning then, if we want the next state to be a zero, j must be a zero. So this is how we develop the excitation table and saying when Q in the present is a zero, Q next state is a zero, our input on J must be a zero and we don't care what the input is on K, it does not matter. All right, let's look at the next combination. So our next combination would be when Q in the present state is a zero and Q in the next state is a one. 
So down here in the table, Q present zero, Q next one. We use a characteristic equation saying, here's Q next, we want Q next to be a one, so I'm just substituting in, Q present is a zero. Once again, we end up with the equation then of J ended with one, or with zero, and we can see then that J must be a one. So when Q in the present state is a zero, Q in the next is a one, our input J must be a one, and our output K is a don't care. The next binary combination is when Q in the present state is a one and Q in the next state is a zero. So Q in the next state zero, Q in the present state a one. We substitute that in, well, one complemented gives us a zero. We know that anything ended with zero will give us a zero. In this case, we're going to end K naught with one. We look at this and we, this equation comes down to K naught must be a zero. It means we don't care what J is, and in order for K naught to be a zero, K must be a one because the complement of one is zero. We come up with this line then for our excitation table. Finally, our last combination is when Q in the present state is a one and Q in the next state is going to be a one. So Q in the next state is a one here, Q in the present state is a one and a one here. All right. Complement of one is zero. Once again, J is ended with zero. That does not affect our equation. We will not care what J is. K naught ended with one simply gives us K naught. We come down to this equation that one is equal to K naught. Well, K naught, K must be a zero then in order for K naught to be a one because we need one to be equal to one. So K naught, K must be a zero. Right. Our summary then of our excitation table for the JK flip-flop shows our present state and our next state and what our values of J and K will be. Right. In, after we develop the T flip-flop excitation table, we'll go back to the state transition table to see how, that we, use, how we use these. And as you can see, Whenever Q in the present state is a zero, we're always going to see that K is a don't care. When Q in the present state is a one, J will be a don't care. And all right, now the T flip-flop. The characteristic equation of the T flip-flop is Q in the next state is equal to T and with Q naught or with T naught and with Q which could be T exclusively ORed with Q as well. Right, let's look at what happens when Q in the present state is a zero and Q in the next state is a zero. Q next zero here, Q present zero, zero filled in here in the characteristic equation. Right. Well, zero naught is a one, so we're gonna have T ended with one. T naught ended with zero is going to give us T ORed with zero, which is going to come down to the equation of T must be zero. But when there is no state change, when Q in the present is a zero, Q in the next is a zero, T must be a zero. And if you think of the T flip-flop, we know that it holds its state as long as T is a zero. We only toggle when T is a one. So to hold state means we're not going to change from the, the next state will not be different than the present. So it makes logical sense as well by the way we define the T flip-flop that the input T would be zero. Right. Next binary combination, when present state is a zero and the next state needs to be a one. We substitute in the one here for the next state, the zeros for the present state. We're going to come down to T ended with one will give us T. T not ended with zero gives us zero and this says one is equal to T. Right, which again makes sense. Present state and next state are different. When they're different, a toggle flip flop, the input T must be one in order to toggle from one state to the next in order to change the values. Again, we'll toggle here when Q in the present state is a one and Q in the next state is a zero. Next state is a zero here, present state is a one here. Well, T ended with zero will give us a zero. T naught ended with one gives us T naught. But we see here that zero must be equal to T naught. T must be a one because one naught will be zero. So when Q in the present state is a one, we're gonna transition, we're gonna toggle, the next state will be different. Our input T is a one. Only in our last entry in the table, when both the present state and the next state are the same, when they're both ones, we end up with, this is our next state, here's our present state, we end up with zero or with T naught, or finally down, one must be equal to T naught. T must be zero because zero naught will be a one, 
and there's our last entry in the excitation table. Once again, we're not changing state. When we want to hold state, our input T must be a zero. And there's a summary then of that excitation table. So you are going to want to keep these excitation tables in your notes, keep them handy. Two things you should know already, you should know the characteristic equations of the flip-flops, write those down in a note sheet, write these excitation tables down in a note sheet as well. You'll need to refer to them for your homework problems. Okay, now we can talk about how we want to start developing the state equations for our flip-flops, and we'll do that in the next lecture.